Hi, and thank you for listening. This is Sherry Andrea, and I appreciate you. Uh, If you're looking for me, you can find me at sherryspeaks.com. Please do remember to like and subscribe. And after you subscribe, hit that little bell next to the word subscribe and select all to make sure that you're notified either if I upload a video or if I go live in the evening doing live mini readings or uh, if I post, upload, you know, upload a post because sometimes when I have a sale or something going on, I will uh, create a post so that everyone can get notified. Okay, so... (laughs) You see the title of this video, Shamed Over a $50 Bill. What is wrong with humanity? Okay, so let me tell you the story of what happened. Okay, so today I was out with my son. Um, He wanted to go to Academy. Um, My parents had given him some money so that, you know, if he wanted to go to like Academy or Kohl's because he's very tall and also he wears a size 14 shoe so it's difficult with how big he is sometimes to find clothes and sneakers and shoes that will fit him so there are certain stores we'll go to where we know we'll have pretty good luck like academy dicks um kohl's um so anyway so we're on my way to academy i wanted to stop and get gas um, since I was passing a 7-Eleven, I was like, oh, okay, I'll just stop on my way. Now, this is a 7-Eleven that I don't normally go to to get gas. I normally go to the one that is nearest my house. But the reason why I didn't is because I didn't head in that direction. I was heading the opposite direction. So I actually wasn't passing by that one that was closest to my house now the one that's closest to my house i've been living in the area where i am technically you could say 17 years i've lived in the house that i'm in now after you know i moved in after my son was born but really technically i've been kind of on and off in this area where i live since 1992 um so you know, I've gotten to know a lot of the people that work in this area at the various stores, grocery stores, and they're they're really nice to me. They're really good to me. <laughs> but now going outside, you know, that little radius right there. No, there's no telling what's going to happen. And today was a perfect example of that. If had I gone to the 7-Eleven that's by my house, the one that I most often go to, You know, I walk in there, one of the employees is always like, hi, my friend. Um, The other guy is always, even if he's busy, he's always like, hi, nice to see you. You know what I mean? They're always so nice and so good to me. Um, So I go to this other 7-Eleven. I go inside to pay for my gas because I don't use, like, card at the pump. Um, I always go inside and pay, whether I'm using a card or cash. But see, to be perfectly honest, I don't know, last year, 2020, during um, the, you know, the pandemic, it wasn't that bad for me. Yeah, financially, it was a little bit hard. It was, you know, hard for most of us. But it actually wasn't that, that bad. I really only had a couple of, you know, times, you know, a couple of months where, you know, I struggled a little bit more than normal. You know what I mean? This year has been different. I don't know what's up this year, but oh, financially, oh man, talk about a struggle. And, you know, if that wasn't bad enough to add insult to injury, you know, I, I get emails occasionally from people like literally not being nice, like demanding that I send them money. Like I got an email from some lady that said, you know, I don't know how I'm going to pay this plumbing bill, you know, and I, I need to get my plumbing fixed. Send me $200 now and I'll pay you back on Friday. And I'm like, she wasn't even nice or cordial about it or anything. Look, I understand people think I got it like that. 
they see the nice website and everything. They know that I do the readings and the coachings. And I guess everybody is just assuming the same thing. I'm not going to donate money. I'm not going to spend money on our website because tons of people are probably already doing that. So guess what happens? Nobody does it. And Sherry suffers. <laughs> but, you know, I kind of keep a pretty good attitude about it. You know, I understand that people have different perspectives on things. And I always remind myself, well, you know, they don't know. They think, you know, that I, I'm like the other people and that I'm just sitting on a pile of money. You know what I mean? They think that, you know, you know, I'm probably, you know, pulling in a hundred thousand a year. <clears throat> no, uh, would love it if that happened. <laughs> But, you know, me and Tether, we're not, like, we're not materialistic. We're very often content. We aren't people that are always in, like, want. Like, we're not always wanting something. You know, me, I'm content if I can, you know, go outside, do some yard work, or I'm content if I could, can, you know, play a game on my tablet, I'm content if I can, you know, maybe, you know, watch, you know, Andy Griffith on, I found Pluto TV, um, I've discovered that, where you can watch things for free, and they have Andy Griffith's show, which I love, but I only love the, the episodes that include, um, Barney, so it's mainly most of the black and white issue, the, um, episodes, but anyway, so, you know, I'm not hard to please. You know, so if I don't have a lot of money, I'm not like, you know, upset about it. You know, if we don't have a lot of money for food, like I just always make sure I feed my child. Hey, if I gotta go to bed hungry, look, I've, I, I've done that before. That doesn't bring me down. That doesn't bring me down. If I don't have money to feed my own self, guess what? If you go to bed and you're asleep, you're not going to notice that you're hungry, <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying anything to take away from people who are in third world countries and they're starving because actually I'd probably say, well, feed them before you feed me. I, you know, I'd probably say that I'd probably be like, you know what? I'm used to sacrifice and I've gotten pretty good at making a sacrifice and it not getting to me, feed them first and then come back. And if anything's left, then you can feed me. So that's the type of person I am. So, okay, to continue with the story, I go into the gas station. My mother had given me a little bit of money. Um, most of it, when she gives me money, of course, you know, I use it mainly on my son or things that I need for the household. You know, I might need to go to the dollar store, buy toilet paper, laundry detergent, whatever. You know, or in, in this case, I, I, I needed um, the last time she gave me money to buy a part um, for the dryer. And I, I had to, you know, because I have to be my own handyman. So, but in... And also, I, I just the other day had to go to Home Depot. I have to replace the fill, fill tank valve on his toilet. So I had to buy that. Parts aren't expensive, but you know what I mean? When you don't have a lot of money, anything can be expensive. But anyway, so my mother gave me a little bit of money. So, and she gave me a $100 bill. But I, what I had in my purse left was a 50 because somebody that had given me change had broken the 100, but they had given me a 50 and 20s. So I had a $50 and then I had some ones, but I was getting gas, so I didn't have enough ones. So the, I had to pay with the 50. So I can, okay, and let me tell you this, okay, so when I walk in, there's two cashiers one is already waiting on somebody it was a spanish lady the other lady which is a, a young black girl she's probably about 20 years younger than me so she's probably in her third 30s at the most she was talking to the other employee but she wasn't like helping anybody so she immediately said you know what can i what can i do for you so i i as i handed her the 50 i said to her i apologized I said to her, I'm sorry, this is the smallest I have. Would you believe 
this girl got a smirk like on her face, like a nasty smirk, tilted her head and looked at me. And she goes, oh, this is the smallest bill you have. This is the smallest you have. I guess she was assuming that I meant, oh, I'm sorry. I don't have any small bills. I just, all I got in my wallet is a whole shit ton of 50s. Excuse my um, expression. That's how she looked at me. Like I, like, like I did something wrong. But I'm actually apologizing because I know a lot of the times when, you know, you go in stores and you hand them a 50 or a 100, sometimes that can be a hassle for them to break that. So I always immediately, if I ever have to do that, I always apologize. Or I either apologize or, or I'll ask before I hand it to them, can you break a 50? When I got back outside, I mean, I was just, I was really surprised and shocked. And I'll admit a little bit hurt because my feeling was just like, I mean, most of you have seen pictures of me, you know, I'm African American. This girl was African American. So I was also a little bit hurt feeling like, wow, darn, you know, the one that's going to like do me in, that's going to hurt my feelings. It's <laughs> going to be my own people. <laughs> it's going to be my own, you know, my own sister is going to do that to me. And so when I get back out to the car, um, I open the door to put my wallet back inside and I tell my son what happened. And after I finished pumping gas, I got in. He said, he was like shaking his head. He said, if she would have said that to me, I would have said, and you're working at 7-Eleven. But you know, I'm not that type of person to like shame somebody for anything. So of course that didn't come to my mind to, you know what I mean, to insult her back, you know, I'm, and I often, you know, tell you guys, that's not the way to handle things, um, y you hold your light, you don't stoop down to the other person's level, so what you want to do is, yeah, it was, it wasn't very nice what she did, yes, it made me feel bad, because I, I felt like, she made me feel like I had done something wrong, like she was shaming me for like what bragging that I had a 50. I mean, here I am walking back to my car thinking this chick just don't know. I mean, a good day for me if I could feed both Tyler and myself. And so it really kind of did hurt my feelings. Um, but not enough for me to like go caring on her, you know what I mean? <laughs> not enough for me to like turn into total a total Karen. Um, but you know, yeah, there's a part of me that like as I was driving home after we'd come from Academy, there was a part of me that felt like, you know, I really would love to stop back by that seven eleven and give her a piece of my mind. But it's just like, nah, it's after the fact now. If I do it now, I really am going to look like a Karen. <laughs> but anyway, I, you know, sometimes these things happen and it leaves in your mind that question like, what? What is wrong with humanity? Just when you think it's safe to go back in the water. Right now, oh my goodness, crazy is out there. People are doing so many terrible and horrific things. I mean, if you go on Facebook or you go on YouTube, there is no shortage of videos showing you crazy, inappropriate, horrible, tragic stuff that, that people are doing. Um, yeah, I mean, and then on top of it, then on top of it, like, as though it's like the icing on the cake, then the natural disasters that happen that we have no control over, then that's put on top of it. You know what I mean? Um, but we do have control of ourselves. But there's a whole lot of people out there right now that I don't know they're they're acting like they have been given permission to not hold back anymore like they have okay here's an example of that of how bad it is 
this is starting to become a daily thing. Um, I don't really go out and about, you know, that often. Um, but, okay, so yesterday, me and Tether were out. Um, I ran a couple of errands, and one of the errands I had to run was I needed to stop by the UPS store because I was returning something uh, for my son and my father that they had bought online, and I they I they had given me the um you know the return label to print out and put on it, and so I figured you know UPS store is right here, so I'll go in there. Um, get the tape and tape the package up and then, you know, get them to put the, you know, tape the label to it. And yeah, it was easy. Of course, always easy guy in there. The guy, the young guy in there working was so nice, so polite, so awesome. But here's the thing. They're, um, they bulldozed our grocery store that's in that strip shopping mall because they're rebuilding it a new one with a cafe and this and that and all nice and new um so the park the middle of the parking lot is um chain link link chain link fenced off and so the parking is kind of weird so a lot of people have been um you know parking in that fire lane at the curb and getting out, running in, doing what they got to do and coming out, especially, of course, when it comes to picking up food at the restaurants right there. It really hasn't been a problem. Se you know, security, you know, the security card that drives around. No, you know, um, n no one's complained. Nobody's harassed anybody over it. Um, yeah, that's a fire lane and we know it's a fire lane. And like, if there's a problem, we know like, Hey, if fire truck, if emergency vehicles come, we better not be in that fire lane. We all know that my father was a firefighter and then director of fire prevention and control for New York state. Um, I know better. I know that I know what I'm doing, but when I got out the car and my son is still in the car, so I get out the car and I tell my son, lock the door. I grab the package, I go inside. There was this man that was standing outside and I didn't know why he was standing outside because I don't really think about it because I'm minding my own business. Well, obviously he wasn't minding his, he was minding mine. <laughs> so as I go, I walk by him because he's standing almost right in front of the UPS store. As I walk by him, I open the door to go inside but as I'm literally in the doorway, I felt, I just felt something. You know how when you feel like somebody's staring at you? I stopped in the doorway and I'm still got my hand holding the door open behind me. And I stopped and I literally turned around. And sure enough, he was staring at me. You know how a person is staring at somebody and as they go by, they just keep staring and they just keep turning and following them. They don't just glance and stop looking. No, he was staring at me and I stood there a good five seconds just staring back. And he just kept staring at me and he had this, I don't know, it was a look on his face that made me feel uncomfortable. And I don't, I, you know, in my mind, I wasn't thinking that, oh, he's staring at me because he's pissed off at the people who are parking at the curb in the fire lane. And that look on his face was like kind of, how dare she? You know what I mean? I didn't know why he was staring at me. Um, I said something to him, but I'm not going to repeat what I said. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat what I said, but as I finished saying it, I was turning back to continue walking inside just as the employee was coming out of the back room. So as I finish what I'm saying, I'm facing the employee and I started laughing and I said to the employee, I said, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> that wasn't meant for you. And we both started laughing and he was like, oh, I know it's okay. <laughs> Because I had to apologize because he probably came out of the back room like, what the heck? Why is, why is she say, saying this to me? <laughs> anyway, again, it's just like that was just yesterday. And it's like 
I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with humanity right now. Um, I have been saying to people that the people who are doing some of these things, they're not showing a new behavior. They're showing a behavior that they had all along. However, it was like undercover. In the past, they wouldn't dare behave that way. But now it's coming out, it's coming to the surface. They're showing their true colors. We're getting a chance now to see the real state of humanity. Okay, nothing has changed. This is not new. These people, this is how they always were. They just weren't showing it to you. And now they are. Now they're feeling comfortable to come out of their shell a little bit and show their true nature. So it's really important now more than ever that you, I mean, there are going to be some times when you're going to react like I did yesterday at the UPS store, because there are some times when you, you're going to need to one, stand up for yourself and two, maybe kind of in your own way, let that person know not everybody is going to take what you're doing well. There's some crazy people out here that would have really gotten up in his face and, and been pissed and confronted him over that. There are some people that would have gone to their car, gotten a gun and shot him. There are some crazy people out here. It's kind of like you almost want to teach the person a lesson to say, don't think you can get away with that with anyone. You can lose your life over that behavior and that, that would be a shame. Now, as I'm finishing up my business in the UPS store and I'm getting ready to leave, I noticed he's now inside the store with somebody that I, I think was his wife. So then it dawned on me, okay, that's why he was standing outside because, I don't know, he was waiting for his wife to park or something or I don't know. But anyway, so, um, you know, I was just thinking, you know, not everybody um, takes kindly to certain things and some people have a, a reaction that's way way overboard there are some people if you even look at them they think you're looking at them the wrong way they're like ready to fight you and you know it was me he did it to you know so he was safe doing it to me but just think of the other crazy people that are out there that he's not safe doing that to that would have no problem flipping out and raging and going back to their car and getting a gun and shooting him. He's playing a, you know, a very dangerous game. When I go out, I don't care what anybody's doing. If somebody is, I don't care if somebody is parks sideways and takes up three parking spaces, not my business. You, you have to really at this time keep your nose out of all other business except for your own because it's not worth it the trouble you could end up bringing down on yourself it's not worth it I this you know the saying don't start none won't be none you know I I say that to myself all the time and I say it to many people all the time don't start none won't be none you know, before you decide that you're going to react back to somebody um, or you're going to feel that it's your job to point out a rule somebody is breaking, you, you should ask yourself, is that my business? Like if it's at a store, is that your store? Is that your parking lot? The, the rules, are those your rules? Who is supposed to enforce those rules? Were you put in charge to enforce those rules? No, but we all know what the rules are, but we see people breaking rules all the time. I mean, I see people speeding all the time. That doesn't mean I'm gonna chase them down in traffic and go, you know, uh, you were going 15 to 20 miles over the speed limit, and I know that because I tried to keep up with you and I couldn't. <laughs> which would point out that I was also speeding, you know, but you, nobody assigned you the rule keeper. Nobody said, Hey, Sherry, we want you to, um, make sure that people are following the rules on university Boulevard from Dean to Rouse road. We're giving you that section. You get to police that. Oh, and here's a police car in the keys. 
You know what I mean? Nobody is doing that. So you really have to stop and think, wait, did somebody assign me this? No, they didn't. You literally keep yourself safe and remind yourself, you know what? Not my business. Not my business. Let somebody else handle that who's supposed to be handling it. And hey, if the store, whatever, whether that parking lot, if they're not handling, you know, enforcing their rules, you want to be mad at somebody, be mad at the store. You want to be mad at somebody, send an email to the store and notify the manager, hey, by the way, you know, I would really appreciate it if you keep an eye out and you, you know, do something when, when cars take up three parking spaces like that. Um, no, let them handle it. Notify whoever's supposed to be overseeing it, the manager of the store, whatever. Notify them and then move on. Not your business, right? Not your business. And you don't want any trouble. You want to live a peaceful life. This is a part of living your best life. Is to kind of keep in your own lane. You know, stay in your own lane. That is a very big part of living your best life because you can't live your best life if you're always in the middle of chaos. That's not how we live our best life. Living our best life means we've got peace. We're not always having to constantly fight somebody over something. We're getting peace. We're getting quiet. We're getting to have a smile on our face. We're getting to enjoy laughter and not misery. And one of the best ways to live your best life is to work on those reactions. Yeah, sometimes you you might have a reaction, you might get mad, but stop yourself before you let yourself follow it through. Just stop yourself. Just say, wait a minute, is this a battle I want to pick today? You know how you got to be careful. You, you Pick your battles. Is that really the battle you want to pick that day? It's almost like saying, <clears throat> if this battle may lead to me getting killed or going to jail, is this the battle that I, you know, is it this, is, is this the battle I want to fall on the sword for? Really? No. Like today, the comment about the $50 bill, yeah, it hurt my feelings, but really, mm -mm. that wouldn't have been worth me, you know, getting shot or going to jail for. No, heck no. Because it's just words. I remember when I used to come home from school when I was little and I'd be all upset and crying and complaining to my mother about the kids that, you know, were picking on me, which it was always the same ones. You know how that is. Um, I remember my mother would always, she had no patience for that. She would be like, well, did they touch you? Did they hit you? And I'd be like, no. No, it's just words. They can't hurt you with words. She said, but if they put your hand, their hands on you, then come and let me know. I didn't really get it back then. Um, her always saying that kind of pissed me off because I wanted her to not only be sympathetic, but I wanted her to be as mad and uh, as upset at it as I was. I wanted her to want to fight like I wanted to fight. Like, I wanted her to go and whoop somebody's butt. To be perfectly honest, that's what I wanted her to do. I wanted her to march down to that school and demand that that child be disciplined. That's what I really wanted her to do. And I couldn't understand back then why she was always the whole, it's just words, words can't hurt you. They can say whatever they want to you as long as they don't touch you. And to me, when I was little, I just thought that was the biggest bunch of crap I ever heard. I was just like, what kind of crap is this? Who made this up? <laughs> you know, it wasn't until I became, became an adult that I kind of understood it. That I understood, wait, words aren't bad. I mean, words are bad, but words can't hurt me. Yes, words have vibration and words have power behind them, but physically, words can't hurt me. Um, but nobody ever tells you how to deal 
with the emotions and how words make you feel inside. Sometimes something bad can happen just by somebody saying something to you and it will lead you to like literally from the inside out feeling horrible for days. Nobody tells you growing up how you're supposed to resolve that. They just tell you, you know, hey, it's just words. You know, as long as they're not, you know, physically touching you. But nobody ever tells you how to deal with the agony that you're going through on the inside. Um, you really have to be at peace with yourself. You do. You have to be in this place where you're so at peace with yourself that you can almost agree with the things people are saying your mud and you could almost go hmm maybe you're right maybe I am because remember in Buddhism it's taught that it's wrong to tell somebody they're wrong or to like correct them karmically speaking you're not supposed to do that karmically speaking you're supposed to say hmm maybe you're right you're not saying they are. You're just not saying that they aren't. You're leaving it in a neutral karmic place. You know what I mean? You're leaving it in a neutral place. Karmically, it's not going to it's it's not going to create bad karma for you. You know, and so the so you're walking away with them being the only one that has bad karma for for what they said to you. So, anyway, I just wanted to uh, share that. Uh, free, feel free to uh, share anything that's been, you know, that you've been noticing or that's been happening with you. Feel free to share any stories of, like, what you've run into. You know, the crazy things you're dealing with right now and, you know, how you handled it, you know. Um, whether you handled it in a good way or a bad way, feel free to share that. Um, you know, we kind of have to support each other, you know, you, uh, everybody needs to share these things with somebody, you know, because, um, right now it's getting really, really crazy and we kind of got to stick together <laughs> as much as we can. But anyway, uh, thank you. I hope you are having a, an awesome day. And uh, we will be back here again, or I will be back here again soon. Um, namaste.